Shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. That's another opportunity that the Lord has granted us. It's a blessed day and has no option by being that beautiful day that we desire. Why? Because day, the day has nothing in itself. It will depend on the Creator, the one who, you know, everything has its source days have their source from God and God is in you and God is one with you your words are so powerful over days and your words are so powerful over things that are created why because everything that was created was created by God and if it was created by God you are one with him you are his mouthpiece it means that whether you know it or not, actually your words are so powerful. But the acknowledgement is what makes it real or tangible or, you know, effectual. If you acknowledge that you are one with him, it will change even your talk because you understand the weight of what you say. Glory to God. And this is so important because it also adds on the reality and the truth that reveals our, um, our, our, our power. We're studying in Ephesians chapter 6 and we discovered in chapter 6 that uh, we have power. So Paul writes, you know, to the Ephesians chapter 6 verse, uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is this I, this word, the wiles of the devil? First and foremost, the devil means the one who's against, against the will of God, the one who is fighting the will of God. Whether it's an idea, a thought, a person, all that may be called the devil. Number two, he says, that the wiles of the devil it means it might not be uh, as white and black clear it might not be clear you know because these are wilds wilds are, are you know some some tricks that will take someone who is alert or vigilant or or who has his eyes opened to be able to see the wiles because many times when the wiles um, are played out people will find themselves defeated without knowing how or they will find themselves being victims of something they do not understand so basically the wiles of the devil means it's it's these are lies deceptions which are hard to detect and the times will not realize that these are this this is a lie this is not true this is deception this is not true you know anything that is against truth is a while so this the wise of the devil it has all to do with deception or lies well and but these lies are not clear that is to say a layman in a layman's perception cannot they cannot get it only by the help of the Spirit of God or by the knowledge of the truth will you discover ah, that this is wrong or this is a lie. Well, so he says that put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, first and foremost, we now understand what we are dealing with here. The battle here 
or what we are dealing with here is uh, truth against uh, deception. So the battle is about truth against deception. And uh, truth against deception means this is something true that is supposed to be believed, but there's something else which seems to be true. It's an illusion. So illusion against truth. So it's an illusion. But you know, even this battle is not such as what you are used to or what you know. Why? Because the moment the truth is clearer, the wiles, the deception lies cannot stand. They will just disappear or vanish. It's like darkness and light. The moment light appears, darkness will disappear. So the only uh, reason why darkness is still there is because of the absence of light. Or the only reason why there's still deception is because the light, the truth hasn't come out yet. Well, when the truth comes out, there's no power of lie. It's, it's, it's over because truth is also powerful. Glory to God. So he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the, the devil. Now, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against, the, against flesh and blood. He says, ordinary things, but against principalities. These are, are leaders or people in positions that can take, uh, decide somehow and, and, and whatever decisions have been made, will be executed and you'll find those are thoughts, those are ideas that are ruling a nation or ruling people or established by certain uh, people and men who are in power against powers, you know, the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. The, the rulers of the darkness of this age means what? You see, this age in which we are and even the time Paul was writing the darkness of this age, rulers. When you study in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, rather chapter 2 uh, verse 7 8 9 rather verse 6 7 8 9 you see Paul talking about the wisdom that we speak the wisdom of God and to those that are mature and then he talks about the rulers of this world did not understand Christ Jesus so they crucified him so the rulers here they are also said they, they are also mentioned it says rulers of darkness of this age so we see people main real men who are being utilized by evil thoughts i mean they are not uh, they are walking in darkness they see they don't see they are blinded every thought every idea remember darkness is uh, the the uh, the opposite of of light that means there's ignorance there's ignorance there's rejection of knowledge there's blindness everything so imagine if those rulers are blinded they cannot see like jesus said that the, the blind are leading other blinded people so he says we are dealing with such things he says therefore those are thoughts ideas or ignorance or blindness that you are dealing with he says if that is the case you got to understand how to deal with it otherwise will be victimized without uh, you knowing how to deal with this. Now, looking at this, there's something very, very important I want you to get. He says, for we do not race against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, when people hear spiritual horses, uh, spiritual uh, horses, you know, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, people now think, ah, it's the heaven, heaven. No, heavenly places, it means a higher ground, a higher place. And do you know that when the altar, for instance, when the, the, the temple, in the temple, the place where the altar was, it was also called a, a, a heavenly place, a higher place. That means those who had uh, the authority and the power to actually minister to people and they were representing God and they were standing in those high places to to administer you know the 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 sacrifices and this is what he says this is talking about the rulers the leaders those who are in those positions the Pharisees the the the, the um, the priests, those who seem to be spiritual, because he talks about 
against spiritual hosts of wickedness. And unfortunately, are they really good people? You remember one day when there's a certain man was killed, now he was beaten to, to death, and uh, there was uh, a good Samaritan who came after later after uh, the, the Levite and the, and the priest. And these people were actually considered spiritual. They were supposed to, to take care of that one who was beaten and who was uh, suffering, who was about to die. But they did not take care of him. Only the Samaritan who passed by who was not considered spiritual. So he says, now, if they were considered spiritual, but was that uh, kindness or wickedness? So he talks about the cause of wickedness in the heavenly places. So these are people who represent the spirituality, but honestly, what, what is coming out of them is wickedness instead of love and, and life. So he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And talking about the full armor of God, the whole armor of God, he describes the armor of God because this is the second time talking using this word armor of God. In verse 11, it talks about uh, armor of God and therefore take up the whole armor of God. He talks about armor of God again in verse 13. That you may be able to withstand, withstand in the evil day. Evil day is when all these things are against you. So, And having done all to stand. Now he begins to describe Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth. Now, look at how this is amazing. He talks about, he describes the, the four armor of God. He begins by the truth. You see? Now, why is it that the truth is needed or is important? We're talking about standing against all the wiles. Withstand, you know, every in the evil day against all these things that are the wickedness, uh, uh, host, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, the powers, the rulers. What is the weapon, you know, the armor, the first armor that somebody has to put on? It says truth. Truth is so powerful. Truth is so pa is power. What is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And the life right and he said if you get to know the truth the truth shall set you free okay i want you to remember when he said he shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free who are the what was what was the audience who are the people that jesus christ was addressing to he talked to the jews he says if you abide in my word you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free now Notice, he says, truth. Why truth? Because truth is the only thing, it's the only foundation you can stand on and be able to win over anything in this life under the earth. Be it vis visible or invisible. Truth is so powerful that it cross cuts the visible and the invisible world. It doesn't matter what comes your way. Whether you call it spiritual, whether human entities, it doesn't matter. Truth is so powerful. So he says the weapon, the armor, the first armor is truth. Now, did you know that Jesus had to use truth to win over the Pharisees, over the Sadducees, and all those who were against him? The priests, the, all the people who were against him, he used truth. He was only preaching truth, and truth always wins. Truth always prevails. Pr truth is power. This is what happened with Jesus. And because of that, they couldn't resist him. They couldn't resist his power and the power's truth. This is what caused thousands and thousands of people to be followers of Jesus Christ in his day. Truth is so powerful. And truth prevails against all things. So if you understand these things are not, you know, not known spiritual things that you don't understand. No, it's like walking in the knowledge of truth. When you walk in the knowledge of truth, knowing who God is, knowing who you are, knowing that you have power and you don't shy away. He says, truth is so powerful. Don't underestimate the power of truth. All glory to God. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.